Hey everybody, it's Angie from Trips with Angie. And I am here at the Fairmont Banff Springs. I can't wait to share my review with you. Hopefully you're a subscriber so you'll also see my upcoming review of the Rocky Mountaineer from Banff. So let's check out the Fairmont. I think the best way to get to Banff is to fly into Calgary and then take the hour and a half to two hour drive. It's a beautiful drive. You can choose to take a shuttle, have a driver drive you, or rent a car. A lot of people choose to rent a car because they want to be able to explore independently once they get to Banff, going to places like Lake Louise, Moraine Lake. The Fairmont is located just outside of the main downtown. It's about a 20 to 25 minute walk. The Fairmont is up a hill or the Fairmont includes a bus pass as part of its resort fee. When you pull up to the hotel, you can really feel the history. This hotel opened in 1888 as the world's largest hotel at the time. The one thing to know is if you book a room in the main part of the hotel, you will have absolutely incredible views, but the rooms are quite compact. Now they have everything you need, king bed, side tables, two chairs, and another table, plus the TV, but you'll notice here the bathroom is quite compact. Now the shower is a decent size, but the toilet and sink area is quite small. If you want a larger room, you could opt to book in the gatehouse. So these were built later and they have larger rooms, but they're not going to have as good of a view as what you're going to see over Bow Falls from the main hotel. One included activity is the history tour. It starts here with all of these incredible photos highlighting the history of the hotel and it takes you through the entire hotel. You can sign up for that in advance or when you arrive. This is also the location for the Rocky Mountaineer Packet Pickup. The Fairmont hosts a large number of conventions, meetings, and weddings, and you can see why based on this beautiful ballroom. Behind the hotel is the original entrance to the hotel. It's now used for gold level guests. Definitely take a look out here because you can see they face the hotel the wrong way. In terms of dining, the 1888 Chop House is your classic Chop House. Now for all of these high-end dining options, you'll want to make a reservation in advance. You can do that before you arrive at the hotel or by meeting with the concierge once you've arrived. The Vermilion Room was the restaurant that was open for most meals, so your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It has a beautiful setup. Um, it's right off the Rundle Bar. Castillo Italian is in the gatehouse section, so this is your classic Italian dishes. Again, definitely want to make a reservation, but I love the room. It's kind of a circular room with windows all the way around. Wald House Restaurant is located just down the hill. You can take a golf cart from the main lobby or walk down a set of stairs. A lot, it's a lot of stairs though. It's a beautiful ski chalet themed dining with a pub underneath. The Rundle Bar is the main bar area, place to be. You can see it looks so cozy. It has this absolutely gorgeous bar. It even has a secret bookshelf door that heads to a conference room just behind the bar. And if that bar's too busy, you can head upstairs to this second bar option. Or, you know, if you're just a big people watcher like me, this is a good spot to hang out. But what's incredible is the outside terrace area. So folks are eating here off the Rundle patio menu. It's a simple menu with lots of great dishes, terrific soups, lettuce wraps, burgers. So if you're looking for something a little more casual, this would be a great spot to go. It also hosts the 360 dining experience. This is a special dining experience that requires reservations. And you have your fire pits where they have afternoon s'mores as an included activity. Stock food and drink is where you'll be able to get your casual dining. So this is just your grab and go breakfast, sandwiches, and salads. If you want even more casual, head to the pizza place over in the bowling alley at the gatehouse. The gatehouse also offers a lot of lounge areas with pool tables. This is where we did the included arts and crafts activities. You can sign up for that in advance. I'm so impressed with the number of activities they have included in their resort fee at the Adventure Center. You can rent these bikes that you can take around the trails around the property. They even have hotel dogs where you can have walks with them or they have special petting hours. And there's an included hike that goes around the property and it's absolutely gorgeous. Here is part of the hike we took and look back upon the Fairmont. Also, Bow Falls is located basically down at the parking lot near the Wald House. So you have incredible hiking opportunities right here. For more tips on how to make the most of your stay at the Fairmont Banff Springs, please be sure to click on the link in the first comment or in the descriptions. A lot of folks stay at the Fairmont prior to joining the Rocky Mountaineer. So I've included a link here to the Rocky Mountaineer review video, also to a video that YouTube thought you might like.